It's that time again. Time to leave San Francisco. Driving over the Golden Gate Bridge this morning was definitely an interesting experience. It was really, really foggy, which I guess is pretty normal. Like, it's normally a little foggy, but I, I felt like today it was especially foggy. But as soon as I got to the other side of the bridge and, like, made it into Marin, I could, like, the sun came out and you could, like, see everything. So it looked really, really cool from atop that rest area where, like, there was, like, light shining on the fog, but then there was, like, this super thick layer of fog covering most of the bridge. I don't know, just thought it was pretty interesting this morning. I'm heading up to uh, Sebastopol. I'm going to be doing some stuff for GTRV again. One of the things I'm going to be doing is shooting the tour video of the NV200 Westy conversion that they have, which you guys have already seen at this point. And then I'm also going to be doing a few other photos and stuff for their Instagram, like I said in a previous video. First step for the day today is getting what's inside this box unboxed. This is my new fridge. It is the Isotherm Cruise 49, like I said in a previous video. Once I get it out, the biggest thing is going to be finding out if it actually fits in the spot that I specifically designed the kitchen uh, for it to fit in. So, I mean, basically the entire kitchen setup is based on the dimensions that were online of this fridge. And if it doesn't fit, it's going to be a major problem. pretty so that's a good first step Yeah, I have to say it's about as close to fitting like a glove as I could have ever hoped for. It's maybe about a quarter of an inch off on one little section as you get towards the top of the faceplate area in the kitchen. So I don't know if I need to fill that gap in or maybe if I can just put a screw in there and it'll kind of tighten it up and make it barely noticeable. But otherwise, it is pretty much the exactly correct size for this fridge. While Shannon and I were designing this space a couple of weeks ago, I was a little bit worried that the door on the fridge, because it is obviously a front-loading fridge, with a swinging door here. I was worried that it was not gonna be able to open all the way, that I was gonna kind of have a few issues and I kind of expected to, but for some reason it actually opens all the way without any problems. I have probably like four or five inches of clearance, so that's also really good news. Right now the door is on the wrong side though. It is reversible fortunately, but it's kind of hard to access the food inside here when you're inside the van. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is switch it to the other side so that it opens this way instead. And that way I can access all the stuff in there uh, from inside the van without any issues. Switching the door was a gigantic pain in the butt. At least it is on now though, and we can move on to the next thing, which I think is also gonna be a bit of a pain because all I have is these two wires right here. So I'm gonna have to go to the store, probably run to Home Depot, pick up some extra wiring. I had a bunch of it like a week ago, and when we were rebuilding the kitchen, I went through like my bag of junk, like my junk drawer, everybody has a junk drawer, right? I had a little, um, like a little plastic container with some junk in it, and I had some wiring, but I just, I threw it out. I was like, I'm not gonna need this anymore. Like I just was trying to downsize and try to save up space while I was moving into the new kitchen setup. And now, of course, one week later, I need that exact wiring. It was like 10 gauge wire, would have been absolutely perfect for this job. So I'm gonna have to run over to Home Depot, get some wiring, and then hook it up and wire it directly into the Kodiak, and then I should have a working fridge. So it's been a pretty long afternoon at this point. Definitely was a little bit more difficult than I had anticipated to get this guy set up here and get everything moved from the old fridge 
to the new one, but it is set up. It is good to go. The compressor is running right now. Seems like everything's fine. I moved everything from the Dometic into the new fridge here. I got the 12 volt wiring done here at the Home Depot parking lot. It also comes with an AC wire as well with just a regular 110 uh, AC outlet on it that I can plug into the Kodiak if I need to, run it on the inverter, or if I have shore power, I could also use it in that way. But I think that the 12 volt is a little bit more efficient, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it mostly on 12 volt most of the time, but I do have that option for the 110 uh, as well. It's been quite a few days now at this point. I'm actually officially back on the road here. I'm in Southern California. I arrived in Los Angeles a couple of days ago. I met up with one of my good friends who I was planning to hang out with and we had dinner. It was really nice. And then actually yesterday I drove down to San Clemente and surfed trestles for the first time in like two years. It was just really awesome to get out there. It wasn't really the best swell or anything like that, but definitely one of my favorite waves on the entire planet and I had a lot of fun. So really nice to get back in the water. Plus the water was really warm. It wasn't nearly as cold as it is up in San Francisco. I didn't even have to wear booties. It was amazing. So that was good, but back to the fridge. The fridge has been working out really well so far, guys. You know, I've been watching it like a hawk and Shannon was joking before she left for the Philippines that like it was like my new child or something like that because I've been monitoring exactly how much power it's using and trying to see if my solar system is going to be enough to keep it running long term or if I'm going to have any issues and so far so good. definitely using a little bit more power than my old Dometic did. I'm kind of noticing somewhere between 1 and 1.5 amps or so, so really not that much. It's extremely efficient over the time that it's running, but it's also staying a little bit colder than the Dometic ever did. It's also quite a bit bigger than that old fridge, and it has a freezer compartment as well, so it makes sense that it's going to have to use a little bit more power to keep it running, and it's also just working better as a fridge. You know, that Dometic was an awesome fridge. It was great for what I needed it for for the three and a half years that I had it, but at the same time, it, it was not without its issues, right? You know, sometimes if that dial would get a little bit towards the center or a little bit too cold, suddenly like all my juices would be frozen and stuff like that. I know I mentioned that in previous videos from time to time. And this fridge seems to regulate temperature a lot better. I actually bought a thermometer at Target, so I've been kind of watching exactly where it is. And it's right around 38 degrees or so normally, maybe up to like 41, but that's where a fridge should be. That's a safe temperature for a fridge. So I'm really happy with it so far, guys. It's a huge upgrade over what I was using previously. I've Notice that the compressor is very quiet when it's running and it's just it just is a lot more convenient to have a side opening fridge like this and I realize that technically it is a little bit less efficient you're gonna let out more cold air when you open this fridge versus when you open a chest style fridge a top opening style fridge like my old one but I'm willing to uh, sacrifice that you know in exchange for the convenience of being able to actually get stuff out of this fridge with my old Dometic I would have like an orange juice on top and I'd have to like play Tetris every single time I went to the grocery store things would get crushed I had like jelly squirting out all over the place like butter spilling all the time was dealing with this on a weekly basis and that's kind of annoying that's not really a fun thing to deal with it was also really small as well the Dometic was kind of getting too small especially when Shannon is with me if we're out uh, camping somewhere or something like that it was hard to fit all the food and the drinks and everything that we need inside that tiny fridge <laughs> I think this fridge is going to be a little bit better long term, definitely going to make my life a little bit easier. So I'm really looking forward to having it. But those are all the reasons that I chose the Isotherm Cruise 49 here. Another one that I haven't really talked too much about is having the freezer compartment in there. That is a huge thing for me, guys. I have not been able to have frozen food in like three and a half years, right? Since I've been living on the road like this, I haven't been able to have ice in a drink. I made ice the first night and it was like the coolest thing ever. I actually still have the ice in there because I haven't used it but it's kind of cool to be able to make a little bit of ice and have ice cubes in a drink it's just something that's like a simple pleasure but it's really really nice i'm really looking forward to uh, to having that and to having this fridge in general i think it's going to work out really well like i've said a few times in this video thanks for watching guys i'll talk to y'all in the next video